Hobart Yacht Race has been a regular on the Australian summer sporting landscape. But in 2020, the race was abandoned, a week from the starter's gun. There's been another major casualty of the pandemic. The 76th Sydney Hobart race has been cancelled for the first time in its history. The impact of COVID-19 that has disrupted sporting events around the globe for so much of the year has added the great race to its list. Now, as the world returns to normal, one of the world's greatest ocean races is back. And there they go, they're underway. Are you going to drop them or not? Make it a really good tag, all right? One, tag's over. It's all happening down at water level. Hey, what are you doing? 630 nautical miles, 1,100 kilometres from the heart of Sydney to the Derwent River in Hobart. Welcome to the Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. It is the Great Race South. Welcome everyone to Seven's coverage of the Rolex Sydney Hobart. A great Boxing Day tradition. And it started very early this morning. There have been preparations underway all morning and a lot happening at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia where most of the yachts are pulling out from this morning. Our Amber Laidler has been down there for all the action. Well, normally the marina here at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia would be bustling with members of the public coming down to catch a glimpse of the crews and bid them farewell before they set sail on that gruelling 628 nautical mile journey to Hobart. Today it has been much quieter. The public locked out due to COVID protocols. We've spoken to a number of the crews here today who were still waiting for their PCR test results at 2 and 5 o'clock this morning. None Nonetheless, though, everybody, regardless of whether those results are back, will be allowed to set sail. And after last year's cancellation, everyone is just thrilled to finally be taking part in what will be the 76th running of the Sydney Hobart. Yeah, well, just like everywhere else, COVID has knocked around this fleet. Joining me is a man who's done 31 of these Sydney Hobart races, Peter Shipway Shippers. It has been tough for the crews this year getting set, but the exciting thing now is, is they're ready to go. It's been a long two-year wait, and uh, as you said, a lot of excitement around the fleet today. They're going to have a very quick exit down the harbour in this southerly breeze. The breeze is going to get stronger as the day goes on, so it's going to be a good old thump tonight for all the fleet. <laughs> hey, tell me about the race down the harbour. It's sort of the unofficial part of the race, but um, who will be first? out of the harbour do you think who's quick well i think it'll be the three super maxis will get there one two three what the order is i don't really know but perhaps uh law connect perhaps could be first out blackjack and uh scallywag will be right on hot on her heels but it's up for grabs oh we love it can't wait to get things started uh let's head across the water now to a man who's an america's cup legend has won this race before jimmy spittle jimmy what are you seeing down there well, g'day Mark, g'day Pete, and to everyone at home for the start of this year's Rolex Sydney to Hobart Yacht Race. Quite different conditions than what we're used to having. That beautiful Norrie Sea Breeze we all had yesterday for Christmas is gone and replaced with a building... Board. ...couldn't furl that big sail. We saw them unfurl for the start. And because of that, they ended up down into the spectator fleet, lost a lot of gauge on the other two, but really well done by David Witt. All the boats really hit the line at full speed, but he was able to get ahead and be first out the heads. Yeah, great race. The first time was from the experienced skippers and just the words of, look, just enjoy the experience. You know, it's, it's a big thing. Often the crews at first time as they get so wrapped up in getting it right, but the experienced skipper saying, just sit back and enjoy it and have the experience. Six hundred and twenty eight nautical miles to Hobart. Bruce Gould says, says go and they're away. Law Connect, top of the screen. Next to them is Blackjack, then Scallywag's got a very good start. Here's Law Connect. Look at that massive sail. Absolutely powering down the harbour now. There'll be 18 to 20 knots of boat speed. What a sight. There's the four start lines. What a magnificent sight. One of the great sights in Australian sport. One of the great sights in the world of yachting. And look at those maxis down the western side of the harbour, charging away in this breeze of south-easterly direction, probably 15 to 18 knots. And the Scallywags just got his nose in front. 
Yeah, yeah, wait. No, not roll. We just got to stay in the pressure up here. David Witt, former 18 foot skip like, sailor, like, knows this harbour very well. Fuck me. Yeah, I think I'm very close. Gives you a great idea of the intensity on board. Yes, the colourful language we can uh, <laughs> understand why, but. See Scallywag, as I mentioned earlier, is a reef in their mainsail for when they get outside the heads. They've shortened down sail already. But look at these boats. They're off now. In 18, 20 knots at boat speed. That is good speed down the harbour too. Just, dude, just calm down. We fucked up the sky. We're run over here. Yeah, law connectors getting run over, as they're saying here. Blackjack trying to hang on to Scallywag, but it could easily be Scallywag that will lead them round this next. To the first turning mark is the Western Channel pie light just disappearing bottom of screen, so they're making very good progress down the down the harbour at the moment. Okay, good This is going to be a quick exit once again this year. Oh, can we get below? So what it means now with these big boats, Mark, the big thing is they've got to roll these reaching sails, Code Zero sails up. It's not the easiest manoeuvre to do. They've got to roll them up and then get them down below because once they go through the heads, they're on the breeze, these sails won't be any use at all. They are flying down. And to give you an idea, dead ahead of them is, is manly as to what they're heading towards. And then they'll make the first right turn. OK, from right to left, Scallywag, Blackjack, Law Connect and Stefan. Stefan Racing. That's Grant Warrington, a colourful character and a colourful boat. Warrow has won the race before in his own boat. Skellywag's broken away well. That is a handy little lead. Look at that spectator fleet yeah. joining them too. And here comes Blackjack. It'll all be about manoeuvres now to this turning mark. Who can get the sails furled the nicest? Who's got the best jib on to go out to sea? You can see Stefan racing just suffering a bit there. She's only an 80-footer, so she's giving away 20 feet to these monsters. But up? David Witt, he'll win the honours to the heads. Okay. There we are, our fleet of uh, 80... 89 on their way out. They are just looking immaculate. Beautiful side. One of the best starts we've seen. Just let Yvette do her job, please. Bit of tension on your RM. Yvette is the navigator. Here we are. Spinning at two minutes after the start. That was a fucking joke. Dual Olympian. Jason Waterhouse on board. Silver medalist at the uh, 2016 Games. It's Seve Jarvan on the left, but there's Lady Bay, Coming South on. Reef. Coming to me. Coming up to so it. Law Connectors worked okay, up to windward of these other two, but I still think it will be Scallywag that will get to yep. this first turning mark. Turning mark yeah, Victor Understood. first. Okay, Bottom right of frame, you can see that, that yellow mark. The That's the turning down, mark for the big boats. That's nice. Copy. Copy. Really good pressure coming here. We'll get so, it's Brad Kellett in the foreground, the navigator the on Law Connect. Bradshaw Kellett, young navigator from a very famous Australian yachting family. Okay, game on shortly. These sails just have to be furled up. Gee, what a sprint race between these three Law Connect, Blackjack, and Skellywag. That's the first turning mark, just at the middle of screen, bottom there. That's the smaller boats will go to that mark. And just beyond them, they're passing Middlehead now. That's Balmoral Beach just above them. Here's the first turning mark. This is going to be very interesting. Not sure yet, but if we do jive, we'll do it early, so you'll have a minute on starboard to set up. Yeah. URM left of screen. They could probably have to jive. They've gone so high with the spinnaker, they won't get.